The date is January 18th, 2008. You're 11 years old and your parents just dropped you and a couple friends off at your local small town theater where you plan on seeing the new Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. You get your ticket, a drink, and some popcorn to go along with it. As you walk down the hall towards the theater, you pass by a poster that has the Statue of Liberty missing its head in New York City destroyed in the background. The poster has the word Cloverfield on it, with five mysterious words that say, something has found us. Your friends mention to you how cool this movie looks. As you continue down the hall, you see the title Cloverfield once again, but this time it's above one of the theaters. You look at your friends and smile as you push open the doors and take a seat. If you couldn't already tell, Cloverfield holds a very special place in my heart, and it's one of the reasons I fell in love with movies and the world of filmmaking as a whole. It's now been over 15 years since its original release, and I still find it to be one of the most well-executed monster movies to exist, and I think a lot of people have forgotten how excellent it truly is. So let's start at the beginning and explore how this masterpiece changed the monster movie genre forever. The original trailer for Cloverfield came out in 2007 and played before Michael Bay's Transformers. The trailer was extremely vague, full of random party footage from a handheld camera that suddenly turns into chaos when an explosion occurs in the Manhattan skyline. There's absolutely no context to what's going on, and even better, the trailer ends without sharing the title of the film, just the release date that says January 18th, 2008. But the fun and mystery only starts there. If you were curious enough and went to the film's website searching for answers, only more would rise. Initially, the website only contained random photos, and if you left the page open for about six minutes, you would hear a random roar type of sound, and that was it. <laughs> Eventually, other websites related to the film started to appear, such as the Tegarato website, which was for a Japanese deep sea mining company, and another site for the brand Slusho. Vlogs from a random girl with a missing boyfriend were found, along with multiple MySpace profiles for characters in the film, such as Rob, Hud, Beth, and Lily. People became fascinated and began searching for more clues, and this helped create a buzz around the mysterious film. Finally, on November 16, 2007, a second trailer released, this time revealing the title for the film as Cloverfield. As random as all these puzzle pieces seemed to be, they helped create an entire backstory to the film and had people eagerly awaiting its release. It's easily one of the best marketing campaigns for a movie ever, and even if you weren't able to experience it as it was all happening, it's still super fascinating to hear and learn about. When the film finally hit theaters, moviegoers were thrown into a wild ride about a group of friends trying to survive a monster attack on New York City while trying to rescue one of their friends who was trapped in another part of the city. The story itself is fairly simple, but that's also one of the reasons Cloverfield is so effective. Every aspect of this film is very much itself. Similar to the marketing that led up to its release, the film holds many mysteries of its own. Nowadays, there's still theories floating around about certain moments, such as the last shot in the film that seems to show something falling from the sky and crashing into the ocean. Some have speculated that the monster lived beneath the ocean and this is what woke it up. Theories and mysteries like this are what gives the film a whole nother layer that you usually don't get from other monster movies. One of the strongest aspects of the film is the use of found footage. Unlike many other found footage films, Cloverfield actually uses it to enhance the story. Throughout the film, the camera cuts back and forth between present day and past footage to help tell the backstory between characters Rob and Beth, the woman he's trying to save in the film. These cuts to past footage show us why she's so important to him and validates his reason to want to go across the city during a monster attack to save her. The use of found footage here doesn't feel forced at all because the story actually actually sets up why we're witnessing everything from this point of view. If you haven't seen the film before, the character HUD, played by TJ Miller, is given the camera to record testimonials at Rob's going away party so that he can watch them all back when he moves to Japan for his job. The shaky and chaotic footage we get makes sense because HUD has no experience working a camera. They even play into this with the editing early on as HUD is learning his way around the camera by having a lot of quick cuts as if he stops and starts recording constantly. The testimonials 
reveals at the party also give us little pieces of who Rob is as well. The found footage here doesn't feel like a gimmick and is very well thought out. Once everything starts to go haywire, it only adds to the experience because it truly makes you feel like you're right there. It's a complete sensory overload and gives you this urge to run and panic like everyone else. And surprisingly, all these years later, the decision to use found footage almost plays even better in my opinion because nowadays everyone seems to film everything. I still remember walking out of the theater the first time I saw the film and how I felt so immersed in it that it felt like I just witnessed something real. JJ Abrams even talked about how they referenced handheld footage from the war in Iraq during an interview when the film was released. It wouldn't surprise me if they also used footage from 9-11 as reference, but by doing this, it only helped make the film feel even more realistic. This all takes Cloverfield to a level beyond so many monster films, because instead of just feeling like I'm watching something happen, this film actually lets you live it. On top of the great use of found footage, the CGI in this movie feels way ahead of its time, and it's honestly aged really well, which is hard to say about a lot of old monster movies and even some newer ones. The visual effects appear very legitimate and grounded and work really well with the handheld camera. The film uses a lot of blurry and out of focus shots to make everything appear more realistic. Since everything is from the perspective of the camera, all the special effects are tied into this point of view. Take the scene when the Statue of Liberty's head comes flying onto the streets of New York. As the head comes towards the camera, it's initially out of focus. HUD then moves to avoid being crushed, which drops the camera down to the street. It's not until HUD gathers himself and takes a second to focus on the head when we finally see it in full detail. By doing this, they were able to hide the little details initially, just like you would see the event play out if you were on the street as well. This holds true throughout the entire film, whether it's the small glimpses of the monster that are captured or the destruction of New York City, since the CGI plays into the limitations of the perspective and also the amateur style footage. Even in the moments when the special effects are on full display, they don't feel out of place and unrealistic. The design choices complement the style of the film as a whole, and there's never a moment in the film when the special effects feel out of place. You can't have a great monster movie without having a great monster, and J.J. Abrams knows this better than anyone else. The concept for the film and the monster Clover, as many fans call it, came to Abrams during a trip to Japan. He was fascinated by how Godzilla was such a staple of Japanese culture and wanted to create a monster that could be as iconic for Americans. One of the reasons Godzilla holds such a value in Japan is because it's essentially a metaphor for the nuclear bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki by the United States. Godzilla is an artistic expression of this tragedy and gave Japanese citizens a way to grieve and cope with these events. Remember how I talked about Abrams mentioning how they referenced footage from the Iraq War and most likely 9-11 as well? It makes sense that Cloverfield is set in New York City, and even if the film wasn't trying to make a huge statement like the original Godzilla, it seems that Abrams was inspired by the concept and used it as an influence to create the monster and story as a whole. Another interesting detail that makes Clover unique is that it's been shared that the monster monster we see in the film is only a baby. We get a glimpse of its potential mother or sibling who is even bigger at the end of the not so great Cloverfield paradox. The monster's design is also very unique, with a face that almost resembles a piranha that has sacks on each side of its head that inflate and recede back. It has enormous front legs that can crush anything in its path, with smaller legs in the back that allow it to move quickly. The design overall is downright terrifying, and there's not really any other monster movie out there that can match its size and unique look. On top of this, Clover also has parasites that fall off of it, which are seen in multiple scenes in the film. This adds a secondary threat which creates even more to worry about, and they are used to create one of the best and most intense scenes in the film. At one point, the characters are forced into the subway system. They decide it might be easiest to follow the tracks over to the area where Beth is trapped. As they're making their way through the subway, they start to hear odd sounds and notice tons of rats running away from something in the subway. Since it's so dark in the tunnels, Rob tells HUD to turn on the night vision on the camera. In doing so, we notice some of these parasites on the ceiling above them. Complete panic breaks out and a fight between the parasites begins, ending in the character Marlena being bitten. Shortly after in the following scene, she seen bleeding from the eyes before essentially exploding. This moment creates a whole new mystery behind what the main monster is capable of and what the parasites falling from it are as well. In the traditional Cloverfield fashion, we are once again left with more questions rather than answers. 
The ride that Cloverfield takes the viewer on is one full of non-stop action and a true sense of panic with a ticking clock. There's not a dull moment in this film and it's paced extremely well. Even during the moments when the film does push the brakes a bit, there's always this sense of hurry lurking in the background. This is set up by the mission to get to Beth before it's too late, which only gets more dramatic once the characters learn that they only have a limited amount of time before a bomb is dropped on New York City in an effort to take out the monster. Even though the story is simple, it's written in a way that keeps everything moving. A lot of monster movies have scenes that get in the way of this, whether it's parts of too much dialogue between characters trying to figure out the monsters and how to handle them, or just downright silly moments that take away from what's actually going on. Cloverfield does a great job at staying on track and keeping any fluff out. With a runtime of only an hour and 25 minutes, there's no room to fill scenes with nonsense. Cloverfield uses every second to build on the story and keep things progressing forward. Rather than trying to make the events play out over a long period of time, Cloverfield takes the path of having everything happen in a matter of hours. In my opinion, Cloverfield is an absolute masterpiece in the monster movie genre. It set a new bar for what a monster film can and should be. I think its achievements sometimes get overlooked and forgotten about, when in reality there's so much to learn from not only the film itself, but the entire approach to the project as a whole. From the genius marketing behind the film, to the excellent use of found footage and CGI, Cloverfield takes you on a chaotic ride that feels more real than any other film in its genre. If you've had a chance to watch it, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like and consider subscribing. I'll catch you in the next one.